<laughs> well, we should be going live. We have about... Hello! Hello world! Uh, we have about 10 minutes to go before the uh, before the quiz starts. Oh, hang on a minute. I have, I have someone ringing. I have Bunty. How's it going, Bunty? You're live on YouTube. Bunty? <laughs> What's on, mate? Yeah, I Very good. You're live. You're live on YouTube. <laughs> I can help. I can help. Nothing, just answer the questions. Yeah, I've got the page come up. Yeah, can you see me now? Oh, you don't have to. Just, um, just, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure, man. Um, what should you do? Uh, well, you know, you should just, if you just refresh the page, you should just see, you know, the YouTube video. And then uh, you can, uh, you can see that. You should see that. You should see yourself on there in about 20 seconds. On YouTube video? Yeah. Yeah, on YouTube, mate. Just press the button. You're there. You're both there. Oh, you can see me. I can see you. So can everyone else now. Right, I get. I gotta go now. <laughs> yeah, Catch you later. Cheers, Pope. Uh, fantastic. That's that's Bunty. Um, uh, best ever surfboards. Best surfboards in Cornwall. Uh, lad from my hometown. <laughs> How cool! How cool is that? Um, yeah. So so we'll be starting about maybe um, seven minutes time. Uh, hello to uh, some of the Fix the Fails teams. They've uh, they've joined us. That's pretty cool. Uh, we have um, some of the other people from uh, the Digital Foundation, which is a charity I work for. Uh, I'm volunteering to do this. Um, I thought it'd be quite mad to do it, and uh, I thought it'd be quite a laugh to do in this lockdown times. So um, we're going there. Everyone's saying hi, Bunty, on the text. <laughs> How cool! How cool is that? Um, Aggie boy. Uh, born and bred, I'm from Port Town myself. Uh, a place called the Badlands, which is where the, all the best surfers live. Um, don't tell the Dukey boys that, but it is the best place. Um, now living up here in the Lake District. Uh, <laughs> saying hi to Bunty. I also have my kids on WhatsApp who are now hassling me as well, saying, Why, why are Cornishmen coming onto the TV? How mad, how mad. Um, I'm going to get rid of me so you can see how it's going. There we go. So that should be on there uh, in a little second. Uh, yeah, we're starting at 7.30. Um, uh, I Ollie. Uh, hi, Ollie. How are you doing? Uh, before I start, that's the only thing I've got to remember. I've written it all down here. Is, um, in fact, I might even bring myself back on for this one. Is that it's Richard Dawson's birthday today. Happy birthday, Richard! Uh, if you're in that, if you're watching live, um, 50, twenty-one today again. How cool! <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we're starting at seven thirty. Uh, five minutes to go. Uh, this is just for fun. This is just just for fun. Um, hello, see the manor. In fact, I can't. Uh, I, I might try and take some of the things as it's going on, but uh, I will try and keep on just with the uh, with the quiz. Uh, we have uh, we have five rounds. Oh no, I need to be in the right place to get that working. That's cool. That is very very cool. Um, so uh, we all have five rounds. That uh, the first one's animals and food. Uh, second one's sports. Third one's um, famous Cumbrians. Uh, the fourth round's a pitch around, so if you see if you uh, if you know where you're going. <laughs> uh, and uh, and the last one is general mountainness. I know mountainness isn't the word, but it's just general knowledge about the Lake District and weird and wonderful things I found whilst creating this quiz. Um, in this sort of mad way. Uh, I know George is actually no Richard 
is only uh, 18 apparently, not 21 um, on that side. So um, yes, yeah, starting at 7.30. Uh, I have volunteered to do this. Uh, I am just doing it for a bit of a laugh um, and having a, let your friends have a bit of a laugh at me. But if you do want to donate, you can text LAKE to 70450 uh, or just click on the link in the YouTube um, channel and um, and you can do it there that way. Uh, that's, that's all I'm sort of going to do that side. Uh, I've just got my middle child saying, speak up a bit. Uh, okay, so I will try and speak up a little bit, but uh, I think the sounds are right. Uh, I looked a bit red on the head that before, but uh, I, I think I'm fine. Hello, did I say hello, Cedar Manor? Hello, Belinda Fox, Ollie Coleman. Hello, hello, those, everyone downstairs. Uh, I have a team of um, intrepid questionnaires working downstairs. Hi to all you guys. Um, hi, Richard Fox. How are how you doing there? Uh, and uh, three minutes to go. Uh, hello from Cheshire, Dave. Brilliant. Fantastic, man. Someone from Cheshire. How are you doing, Dave? How is it down there? Uh, it's been pretty windy up here in the lakes today. Uh, oh, Mr. Conway. We have uh, Sean Conway, superb. Uh, one of our um, uh, crazier people. Uh, one of our uh, sponsored uh, people. That he's age. Um, nice one. Good to see you, mate. Hope the training's going well. Um, Sean's about to go. Oh, I'll try and get closer. Um, Sean's about to go across Africa at some point, uh, quite soon, once the lockdown's up. Uh, okay, Ange. Wow. Hello, James. How are you doing? Uh, we will be starting in about two minutes' time. Uh, Ange, is that better? Can you hear me now? Much better. In fact, I might even be able to turn my mic up a bit. Uh, <laughs> how's that? That might be a little bit louder. That's a bit of a thing. Hi, James from Newdale. It's a bit flat. What's a bit flat? Wow, and we have uh, ladies from Essex. Uh, hi, Louise. Essex, man, that's fantastic. I uh, hope you uh, enjoy queuing up to the Lake District uh, on those sorts of days. Um, mind you, a long, long way. Is that better? Brilliant. Thank you, Ange. The sound is a lot better now. So we will be starting in uh, about a minute. Is everybody ready? Do you have a pen, paper, possibly a little glass of wine just to uh, to get you through the night? Um, like I say, five sections, uh, animals and food uh, is the first one, then sports. Uh, then we'll have a little five minute break and then we'll do the last three. Uh, famous Cumbria, pitch around. And that. Uh, hi Susan from Sunderland, fantastic. So uh, if you'll just say on the chat you are ready and uh, anyone who's not on the chat I'll assume you are ready and uh, we'll begin in a little while. Okay, Actually, I've just realized I'm 20 seconds ahead of you so uh, if you guys are all set I think it is uh, 7.30 for me, so I will, I shall begin. I'll just get this thing on. So the first round is animals and food. Uh, there are 10 questions and you have a possible 12 points. There's a few little bonus ones in here if you get those sorts of things right. So we shall begin. Question number one is worth three points. Uh, there are three, three upland fell sheep up there. Uh, numbers one, two, and three. But which one is a Swaledale? Which one is a Roughneck? And which one is a Herdwick? I'm sure you've. Uh, I'm sure you all know which one the Herdwick is. Um, in fact, I was going to give you an interesting fact about the Herdwicks, and in, in the fact that they're um, the lambs are all a certain colour. But I won't do that because uh, that would give away what uh, which one it is. But uh, do you know uh, one, two, and three? Which one's a Swaledale? Which one's a rough neck, rough fells, even not a rough neck, or could be, you never know. Uh, and which one's a herdwick? So hopefully you've got those there now. So, uh, number two, name the booming bird now found at RSPB Leighton Moss. It's been there since 2018. Uh, very rare bird, uh, very common in the rest of the country, um, especially down on the Norfolk Broads. You can hear them sort of booming away. But the male bird, uh, does like to boom, but what is it called? What type of bird is it? And uh, it's been seen at Leighton Moss since 2018. Um, 
I was going to say, there's, there's an amazing play about it as well on Radio 4 years and years ago. This is how I've heard about it. But uh, there we go. So name that booming bird, uh, Leighton Moss. Number three, uh, what extinct freshwater fish has resurfaced in Bassenthwaite um, uh, Lake probably about maybe five or six years ago? Is it A, a char, B, a herring, or C, a shark? Not as bad as you say, may think. Shark come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, there's ones that look like whales, there's ones that look like hammers. But is there one in Bassenthwaite Lake? That's the question. So, what extinct freshwater fish has resurfaced in Bassenthwaite Lake? Is it char, B herring, C shark, HR? Number four. What is the capital of the North Lakes whose name means cheese farm? <laughs> this is news to me when I was uh, researching this, uh, but uh, this uh, capital of the North Lakes, uh, the actual name of that town, means cheese farm. I suddenly thought, looking at the, the, uh, the numbers there, that I put too many E's in, but um, that's, uh, that's it. I've just realised, uh, oh, one thing I have thought is if you are trying to put the answers up on the um, chat line, uh, I've actually put all the answers in the moderation thing so they don't work. So if it does appear, it's the wrong answer. Sarah. <laughs> so, uh, Capital of North Lakes means cheese farm. Number five, what is the most famous, what is most famous for its distinctive long coiled shape and has protected geographical indication status, PGI? What food? Is it uh, a bit like champagne, a bit like Cornish pasties, all my Cornish friends, uh, brothers? Um, uh, what is the, what has PGI status and is a very long coiled shape? Uh, I met one of the farmers who uses it. He has pigs that live in the forest and he uses them to make them. Okay. Number six. How many restaurants have Michelin stars in the Lake District? Now, I have a, I have a friend who is a, uh, a chef. I asked him this afternoon if he knew the answer, and he thought it was 200 and something, um, which isn't right, luckily. <laughs> but uh, he's also very good at geography. Nice one, Bish. Um, so, how many restaurants have Michelin stars in the Lake District? Uh, and one of them, uh, it, it is actually just the actual how many restaurants have the stars. It doesn't matter how many stars they have, it's just how many in the Lake District. In Cumbrian, what's a skemmy or a skem? Would you eat it, drink it, put it over your body, all three? Who knows? But in Cumbrian, what's a skemmy or a skem? Uh, you could have many skemmies. Who knows? So, in Cumbrian, what's a skemmy or a skem? I, I apologise if that's not the right pronunciation. I am from Cornwall. Number eight. Where is the highest pub in the Lake District? Funnily enough, it's not the highest pub in the UK, which is in North Yorkshire, apparently. But where is the highest pub in the Lake District? I can give you a little clue. Uh, the name of the pub is also the name of the place it is. So number eight, where is the highest pub in the Lake District? Okay, this is another one I might pronounce wrong. What, is, what animal has a scientific name, Scurius vulgaris? Uh, so what animal has a scientific name, Scurius vulgaris? Uh, it's not unique to this area, but it's pretty much one of the last places it's hanging out. Uh, that might help you out a little bit. Uh, so, what animal has a scientific name, Scurius vulgaris? <laughs> Thank you very much on the text. And my kids have just come in with the wrong answer. So, uh, last one in this round. First round. What conifer is native to the UK, thrives in the Lake District, and makes an alcoholic drink? 
This doesn't allow you to go out in the late district and cut them all down. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure it's in the group, but um, what conifer is native to the UK. It thrives in the Lake District. It does really well up here because of the uh, limestone and the, uh, the hardness of the place. Uh, but it also makes a lovely alcoholic drink. So that's round one. I'll let you uh, give you a few more seconds uh, on that side. Uh, I'm just going to ask a question to the group. Right, but I could ask you, couldn't I, rather than just typing it. How's the timing going? Is you having enough time to, to answer the questions? So we'll move on to question, a uh, question, section two of the quiz. Ten questions in this quiz, this part. I just realised that table really squeaks. Uh, ten questions in this, uh, this section. Uh, a total of ten points up for grabs. So 22 in all. So I'm going to start section two. What is the fastest time for swimming a length of Windermere? That's ten and a half miles in dead cold water. Uh, these times are for non-wet suited people. So they are just wearing budgie smugglers at the best of times. Uh, so is it A, three hours, 48 minutes and four seconds? B, four hours, nine minutes and nine seconds? Or C, three hours, 53 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, hello Wallace from Northampton, nice one on the text. Good to see you here. Uh, uh, if, if you've just joined, you could rewind it and watch the questions uh, after that. But um, we're into the second round, which is sport. So fastest time, A, B or C. Question number two. What is the name of a sheep farmer known as the King of the Fells or the Iron Man? A very, very famous local guy. Very, very famous in his sport. One of the first guys to win and do shed loads. Super hard man. So what is the name of this, uh, this the Iron Man or the King of the Fells? Is also a sheep farmer here in the Lake District. Number three. Oh, every time I look at these, I'm scared the answers are on there, but I've, I've, I've double checked it. So, uh, how long is the water line, very important that, the water line on a Windermere class yacht? Uh, very famous, very beautiful yachts. Uh, is it A, 22 feet? B, 15 feet or C, 17 feet. Uh, very, very lovely lot, yachts. <laughs> nice one, Wallace. You, you caught it just at the top, right time. Cool. So, number three. How long in the water, uh, how long on the water line uh, is a Windermere class yacht? 22 feet, 15 feet, or 17 feet? I can tell you, I think it's, in fact, the, the actual length, I think, is 26.5, so any one of those answers might be the real one. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, it is Johnny. Well, no, Johnny, if you, live, if you live in one of the answers, that's fantastic. Hope it's not the shark on Bassenthwaite. Um, that's fine. So, number four. What is the traditional clothing for Cumberland wrestling? What would you be wearing... If uh, if uh, if you do some Cumberland wrestling, uh, I used to work for a company called Line Equipment, and then we had some uh, some Cumberland wrestling champions working for us there. Amazing. So, what traditional cl clothing for Cumberland wrestling? Number five, uh, Bob Graham round. Is a very, 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 very famous uh, Lakeland challenge. Uh, if you're a, if you're a fell runner or even a crazy runner, uh, and Bob Graham created the, the this round. But what did he do for a job? What was Bob Graham actually doing when he created this amazing race? So what did Bob Graham do for a job when he created the Bob Graham round? Number five. In climbing, what does VS mean? Does it mean A, violently sick, B, very severe, 
or C, valiant start. I, th I think it should mean all three of those, <laughs> if you're a good climber or a bad climber. So in climbing, uh, it's a climbing grade, which means how hard it is. Uh, it starts at mild and goes up to E9 these days, maybe even to E10 in our English uh, scoring side. So what does VS mean? Violently sick, very severe, valiant start, A, B or C, number six. <laughs> number seven, which famous cricketer grew up in Cockermouth? Uh, he, to give you help a little bit, if you're not into cricket, he is alive at the moment. Uh, I think he's been awarded an MBE as well, I'm not sure. But uh, he's very famous, he's a cricketer, and he grew up in Cockermouth. Uh, I think I have to thank Ollie for this question. So downstairs should be getting at least one, if not loads of them, because uh, when I did a test, they knew some of the answers. So which famous cricketer, number seven, grew up in Cockermouth? Number eight. How many women does it take to pull a car up the struggle? Uh, it's, it sounds like a joke, doesn't it? But it's not. Um, the ladies have done it twice now. Um, raising money for, um, I think, a cancer unit. I can't remember. I'll, I'll have to Google it. But, um, but they've done it twice over a couple of over a couple of years' time. They the second time up there, they broke their record on the first from the first attempt. Uh, but how many? women does it take to pull a car up the struggle and if anyone knows what the struggle is it's a very 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 steep hill just outside Ambleside up to the Kirkston Pass amazing number nine what do I need if I was going to do the Fred Witten another very famous race here in the Lake District I think there was over 2,000 entrants last year that come and do it on the, on the day um, to be fair, it's the Pacific thing I need. If I didn't have this thing, I wouldn't be able to do it. I could I could take gels, I could do lots of training, I could do all those things. But there is one specific thing I have to have to do the Fred Wynn. And I'm pretty sure if you don't have it, or if it falls apart whilst you're going round, you don't complete it. That's number nine. In this sport round of ten, ten points. Darn table. <laughs> so, uh, what do I need if I was going to do the Fredwin? Number nine. Number ten. Now, Donald Campbell, uh, as we know, set, has set lots of water speed records. But which lake did Donald Campbell set his first water speed record in Bluebird K7? Bluebird K7 is the one we all know about. It's the one that he unfortunately met his end in. But he set six, no, five. Uh, water speed records in K7 before that last fateful run. But which lake did he do the first one on? That's what I'd like to know. In number 10. Amazing. So, uh, so there we go. Well done. Um, we have... Uh, You've done sections one and two. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds just to uh, get yourself together and um, make sure you've got those numbers. And then I'm going to run through the, the answers now to the first two, uh, two sections. And then we'll take a little break. So uh, you all guys look pretty happy on the chat. Uh, I think it's probably time to move into the answers. So sections one and two, there are 20 questions and you can have a possible 22 points. Okay, so here are the answers to the first section. So, which is which? One is a Herdwick, two are Raffles, and three are Swaledales. Uh, if you're really interested in really knowing the technical stuff for your sheep, your Herdwick is grey with a nice white head, and their lambs are always born black. Raffles have a very long face, and Swaledales have the curly horns and the, the rough skin. So that's number one. So, which is which? One's Herdwick, two's Raffles, three is Swaledales. Number two is a bittern, booming bird. Uh, the boys like to boom when they try and shut up the girls. A bit like lads from Windermere, really. So, bittern, number two. 
Number three is a herring. There are no sharks in Bassenthwaite Lake. It's only herring, freshwater herring. Uh, thought it was completely extinct in the UK and the Lake District, uh, and they discovered it five years ago in Bassenthwaite. Number four, cheese farm, Keswick, obvious. I wonder what it tastes like if you had a, a round of Keswick. Someone should make one really, shouldn't they? So uh, number four, answer is Keswick. Five is a Cumberland sausage. Distinctive long short coiled shape, uh, PGI status, Cumberland sausage. Champagne, Prosecco, pasties. <laughs> a whale, nice, nice. Uh, how many Mich uh, Michelin star restaurants are there in Lake District? We have seven. That's more, that's, we have the most outside of London, anywhere in the UK. Come on up here for some good food. We've got plenty of it. And uh, Long Clune has two stars. Amazing. Not 200 or so, like, uh, like my bitch said. <laughs> so I've got to reply to that. It's so funny. Uh, so, uh, number seven, uh, in camera, what is skimmy or skim is a beer? I'd love a skimmy, please. I'll pass one up here, that would be fantastic, or a skim. I don't know if that's the right way of pronouncing it, but uh, if you come in for a, for a beer, it's a skimmy, not a skim. Uh, Pie a skim, please. Or would you just say skimmy? Anyway, that's the answer. Highest lake in the Lake District is obviously the Kirkston Pass, the Kirkston, Kirkston Pass in. Um, all the way up there on the top of the Kirkston Pass. Uh, that's the answer to number eight. Now, a scurious vulgaris is, of course, is a red squirrel. Uh, losing out to the grey squirrel right across the UK. Uh, living a little bit in the Lake District and a little bit in Scotland at the moment. And, tr and he's got a foothold here and he's trying to push back much smaller than the, uh, the greys. I know a lot about squirrels, but I'm not going to go into that now. <laughs> so uh, that's number nine, red squirrel. Number ten, so what conifer is native to the UK, thrives in the Lake District, and it makes sound for me? Juniper. What you add to uh, to make gin. Uh, it loves it up here because of the, uh, the hard um, environment. And it's a conifer, which I never knew until I did this, uh, this place. So, answers to section two in the sports. So hopefully you'll have, uh, I'll give you a little time if you like to, uh, to look at your scores. And uh, we'll move into section two now, the uh, sports round. So the fastest time up the, actually I've just realized you're bound to have got that answer, aren't you? Because that is the fastest time. <laughs> oh, I should have asked that. Anyway, so, so hopefully, hopefully, all of you got this right because the fastest time is literally three minutes, 48 minutes and four seconds. But that's the male senior one. The other two are real too. So the ladies junior did it in just over four hours and the ladies senior did it in 3.53. Over 10 and a half miles, ladies, you can easily beat the men. But how funny, you hopefully you'll all have got that question right because three hours, 48.04 is the fastest time to swim a length of wind a bit. <laughs> how mad. Oh. That's the first cock up. Uh, so, uh, Joss Naylor, of course, is the Iron Man. He's the king of the fells. Amazing fell runner. Uh, won just about everything in his time. <laughs> That's number two. Number three, uh, it's 17 foot C. That's the, uh, the waterline length of a Windermere class yacht. Number four, uh, Long John's. You need to be wearing your long johns. You have a little uh, uh, leather top on as well, but long johns are the traditional clothing of Wrestling Cumberlands. Cumberland wrestlers, even. Excuse my uh, dyslexia. Um. Number five, he was a guest house owner, b, &B owner, up there in Keswick, Bob Graham. Some people call him a waiter, but I will take guest house owner, b, b owner. That was what Bob Graham did, apart from run like a demon. Number six, it means very severe. I like the idea of calling it a valiant start. 
And I tried this, this route, it's me, it's valiant stuff, but it's actually very severe. Uh, quite a hard climb. So number six is B, very severe. Number seven is Ben Stokes. <laughs> uh, he's the famous cricketer, grew up in Cockermouth, born in New Zealand, but uh, moved over here when I think he was about 10 years old. Yes, embroidered vest and, and, and velvet pants, apparently, for Cumberland wrestlers. I, don't, I dare not say that to a Cumberland wrestler, how's your velvet pants? But um, number seven is Ben Stokes. Number eight, how many women does it take to pull a car up the struggle? 30. 30 amazing ladies. I don't know what I don't know if they use the same car the second time round, but um, each time connected to a rope, no engine, up the struggle from uh, from Ambleside to the Coxton Pass. Thirty. If I was going to do the Fred Witten, I definitely need a bicycle. It's a cycle sportive. Without a bicycle, you cannot do it. Possibly a helmet, possibly the, the wheels, but a bicycle is what I'm after. So as I'm the quiz master, if you haven't put bicycle down, you don't get the point. And number 10 is Oldswater. He did all of the other record-breaking attempts on Coniston, where unfortunately he did meet his end. But the first one in Bluebird K7 was Oldswater. And he did, and that, that was his first one, and he did 201.32 miles per hour in a boat. Uh, the one before he crashed, he was doing 270. And he got the world uh, record, which is amazing, which is just nuts. So, thank you very much. Uh, that's two sections done, three to go. I'm just going to have a quick five minute break so I can top up my wine and uh, get myself uh, to go for that. How are you guys doing? Uh, if, you, uh, if you post your scores on the, uh, on the chat, that would be ace. Uh, and I'm going to give you five minutes. So it is, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say it is uh, five, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So about eight minutes. Uh, two minutes to um, eight, we'll start again. Uh, thank you very much. Hope you're having a good uh, having a good time on that. So I will see you in five minutes. I'm just uh, just coming back on. Uh, we won't start for another two minutes, so you've got two minutes just to get yourself down. But um, there's some fantastic scores, man. 
Uh, 22, 14s, 15s, 13s. That's a good, uh, those are good scores. Very, very good scores. I'm sorry, I'm just listening to myself. I need to turn that off so you're going to get hideous reverb <laughs> on that side. I uh, hope everyone's having a nice drink. A little glass of wine for myself. 14 for Rob, very good. Um, apparently Bishy's arguing that when we're talking about Bob Graham, I told him he was an author. I don't know if Bob Graham has actually written any books. He may have done, I guess, um, about his run. Oh no, they're shouting behind me now. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the toilet, actually. I'm upstairs behind this, this sort of thing here. Um, <coughs> so, are we all ready to uh, to start? If you, uh, if you start texting me saying, ready, 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 I will begin the quiz for us on that side when I see it on the um, on the on the speaks. Excellent, Ollie's got fifteen. Well done, Ollie. So let's just get myself sorted. All right. Uh, so we're moving into section three, which is uh, famous Cumbrians. This should, uh, should test you guys. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, ready, 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 ready. So I shall begin section number three. We all know Beatrix Potter, very famous uh, for giving lots of her land to the uh, to the Lake District. But where was she born? Was she born here? Where was she born? I'll go for the uh, town, city village she was born in rather than the uh, specific location but um so where was <laughs> so where was Beatrix Potter born born even Dave I'm sure you can score better than uh, I'm sure your score's fine uh, hi from the Bronx goes in middle Midlands nice one if you're just joining us I think you can rewind uh, these these live things and then play along uh, later on if you want to do the first few sections uh, yeah, Sarah, my boss, is, uh, is keeping very quiet. Very good, very good. So where on earth was Beatrix Potter born? Beatrix Potter born. Number two, another famous uh, Cumbrian. Uh, who lived in Dove Cottage from 1799 to 1808? Uh, Dove Cottage, uh, Grasmere. 1799 to 1808. Who lived in Dove Cottage? <laughs> That's on the scores. Uh, my kids are saying that I'm repeating some of the ones I did in the test. We did a test on this to see how it worked last week. So, number three. Which famous Irish saint was born in Ravenglass? Which Irish saint was born in Ravenglass? Sorry, I'll just, just do a quick uh, check on something. So, number three, which Irish saint was born in Ravensglass? Whoa, what's going on here? Let's just copy that. Number four, Arthur Stanley Jefferson. He has a much more recognisable stage name. Very, very famous uh, actor. What's his stage name? Number four. Number five, name the town where the Queen of England from 1543 to 1547 was born. Number six, 
So number five, name the town from where the Queen of England from 1543 to 1547 was born. In 1895, Canon Rawsley, who was the vicar of Crossthwaite, helped create an organisation that was made for places of historic interest or natural beauty. What's the name of that organisation? 1895, Canon Rawsley. Very, very famous organisation. That's number six, 1895, Canon Rosley, Vickers Crossweight, uh, Historic Interest and Attribute, what's the name of the organisation? Number seven, very simple, name the local saint of St. Bees. Could be a trick question. Uh, but who is the local saint of St. Bees? That's number seven. I can see myself moving and I keep going over the, the lettering, so I'm going to try and stop moving around. So, number seven is name the local saint of St. Bees. Number eight, born on the 26th of December 1734 in Dalton in Furness, name, what's the name of a very famous Lake District portrait artist? I don't know if Bunty's made it. If you are there, Bunty, um, don't ring me now. Give me a ring later on. For anyone joining us now, I had a friend from Cornwall ring up saying that he couldn't find the quiz, get the quiz working. So, number eight, born on the 26th of December, 1743, famous portrait artist from the Lake District. Who is he? Uh, number nine, what's the name of the unofficial... Oh! Thank you very much. I've gone all the way through these. I'll go to there, if you can hear me. Uh, thank you, James. <laughs> but, uh, what can I do? I can, uh, let's just turn that on as well. There's me going away, I'm looking at me. <laughs> so we don't, we'll go from nine. You guys, you guys have all heard them. Uh, I will run through them though, I will get to 10 and then I'll just go back through. What a monkey. Anyway, so uh, what's the name of the unofficial and unsignposted long distance footpath designed by a famous walker, Alfred Wainwright? <laughs> uh, I have to go here, I think. Oh, yeah. So that's number nine. Let's get myself back on here by attempting to get into pieces. Number ten. What is the name of the mutineer who married a Tahitian and was born near Cockermouth? So what is the name of the mutineer who married a Tahitian? There's a little, little uh, uh, clue for you there. And he was born in Cockermouth. So I am just going to quickly run back through those, just so you can see them. Seems I didn't show you. Do apologise. I'm not very good with this technical stuff. So number nine, number one, where is Beatrix Potter born? Number two, who lived in Dove Cottage, 1799 to 1808? Number three, which famous saint was born in Raven's Glass? Number four, what is Arthur Stanley Jefferson's stage name? Number five, name the town in where the Queen of England uh, in the 1500s was born. Uh, Canon Rawsley, uh, Crossweight, created an amazing organisation that was into places of history and natural beauty. That's number six. Number seven, what's the local saint of St. Bees? We all know that, surely. Number eight, born on the 26th of December, famous portrait artist from the Lake District. Number nine, um, 
an amazing long distance footpath. It's, unof it's still unofficial, which is crazy, um, but it's, it's probably the most um, enjoyed walk in the, U in, the, in the UK. And number 10, he was a mutineer, he married a Tahitian, and he was born in Cockermouth. That is your section three. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds just to have a chat about that. Sorry about um, not showing the things. Thank you very much, um, James, for spotting that. I've forgotten to put the slides up. Uh, it's all technical stuff. The wine's kicking in. This is water, not, uh, not gin. And we'll move into section four, which is a picture round. Now, there's a couple of bonuses in here. So uh, you can get yourself um, 12, 12 points on this one. And I've got a, I've got someone has to be on that side. Right, so name the pass where this Roman fort is. Name the pass where this, <laughs> I'm to, there's a, this is one of the ones from the test quiz. And it's been a cheer from downstairs. They know where this is. It's amazing. And just off... Uh, that way, behind that lady who's looking, is uh, is just outside the fort, is where they used to wash themselves because Romans like washing. I've got to admit, if I was a Roman soldier and I got posted here, I think I'll have done something seriously wrong in Rome to be shoved into this fort. It is amazing. If you Once you know where it is, I do recommend you go and visit it because it is literally amazing how well preserved this fort is. Mind you, no, I doubt they're even bother to attack it because it's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, number two, my f I think one of my favourite valleys in the Lake District. Uh, can you name this valley? This beautiful, beautiful valley. It's actually looking down it. Normally, if you if you drive into it, you're normally coming up from the from the far end down down that end. And some, up on that crag on the left is Gimmer. It's very, very great to climb. But what is the name of this beautiful valley? Here's one of the uh, the first extra points. Can you name this town? And what's the name of the large uh, hall on the right-hand side of the picture where the clock tower is? What's the name of that hall? So one point for the town and an extra point for that hall. Very old picture. Um, when I googled it, that's the first thing that came up that was uh, free to use. <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably sort of 1800s. Anyway, what's the name of the town and the extra point for the hall? Now, number four is, can you name this lake? And for an extra point, what's the name of the famous cottage on the right-hand side? So what's the name of this lake? And what's the, and an extra point for the famous cottage that's in this picture on the right-hand side? Uh, the the crazy couples that own it now have a jacuzzi in there. You used to be able to, for a fiver in the winter when you're swimming in this lake, you could go and have it go and sit in it, but uh, you can't anymore, unfortunately. So name the lake and the cottage. Number five. This is I always think this is, this is my favourite picture, uh, and it's one of uh, one of the most confusing ones. Can you name this lake, please? I think it looks very much like another lake, which is my favourite lake. But um, could you name this lake? Number five, what's the name of this lake? Oh, look at that water. One, one day we'll be able to swim back in there. Number six, where on earth is this bandstand? A beautiful piece of art sitting uh, in a park. Uh, can you name where this bandstand is? In fact, I think the weather now it looks almost like that picture could have been taken today. But uh, where is this famous bandstand, number six? Now, number seven, can you name both mountains with very similar names? Very iconic mountains. Um, uh, also, the massif that they're all sitting on is the same name as well, just to give you a little bit of a nudge on that sort of side. Uh, very iconic mountains. Sometimes people climb the wrong one. 
thinking that they've got to the highest mountain, but uh, it's on the other side. Number seven. Number eight, this famous steamboat. Does anyone know the name of it? Absolutely amazing. Uh, it's on Coniston Water, that'll give you a little help. But could you give, can you give me the name of this famous steamboat? It's still, it's sti still, uh, yeah, they use um, environment, environmentally sourced wood. So number eight. Number nine, what is made here? This is a working museum. And what is made here? Number nine, what is made here? If you know the name of this place, that will help you know what was made here in the 1800s. Uh, and finally, number 10, although I have put the number on it, that's another little mistake. Uh, a very famous um, buttress. But what's the name of the town under it? To give you to give you a little helping hand, probably about maybe ooh, eight or ten years ago, myself and a guy called Pete from Swim, Swim to the Lakes uh, tried to buy this town because it was up for sale. We managed to get onto the BBC, Channel 4 and the News at 10. Much to the disgust, amazement and chaos of uh, lots of my friends who were quite impressed to see me on the news at 10, it's coming out of a town, nice freezing water. But what is the name of that town? Number 10. Even though the numbers are not on there, but never mind, it's fine. Cool. So that was section four. This is now section five, which is the last round. My God, where's all the time gone? That's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. Right, so general mountainness. This is our last 10 questions. Uh, actually, there are, there are 11 possible points in, uh, in this round. Can we see four and five again, please? Uh, why not? Come on then, let's go back to the, just for you. Number four, can you name that lake and the famous cottage on it? Okay, you want to go right through the whole lot? Okay, a few people are asking. So, number one, name the Roman fort. I'm going to go through them quite quickly because I don't want to be here all night, but uh, well, I will do these ones for you. So, there's a, it's a very famous Roman fort, a very famous part of the pass in the mountains. Uh, name the valley, number two. Name the town, extra point for the hall. Name the lake. Uh, with a f and an extra point for the famous cottage. Number five, which I think is the hardest. Uh, name of that lake, please. Actually, number four is a tarn, actually. Or is it a water? Can't remember. Never mind. Uh, number five is the lake. Number six is where the bandstand is. Number seven, you're going to name both mountains with a very similar name. In fact, identical, but I've one bit. Or the, and it's the massif that it's on. Name the famous steamboat. What's made here? If you know the name of the place, answers in the name. And what's the name of this town? It's one of my favourite towns in the Lake District. Good walk up, great swim in. I've rescued a sheep out of here, but that's another story. So that's all your questions in question four. So this is the last round. Total 10 questions, 11 possible points. How are we all doing? Hope you all got some good scores. Uh, I am going to uh, just give you a couple of seconds just to let you have um, write your answers down for section four. Uh, have a quick swig of wine, and then we'll get on to section ten. Put to five. God damn it! So, general mountainous, general things about the Lake District. Number one, the fell top assessors check the weather on which mountain. Every single day of the year, 365 days of the year, 
at some point, there's a predecessor going up a mountain. Always the same mountain. Uh, so if you are, and it's worth following them, felt up at um, Lake District Weather on Twitter. Just because the BBC says it's fine and sunny up here, doesn't mean it is. These guys are up there and they can give you a real good feel of what it's like. Uh, and you can also even, you can even go out on training courses with them. They're uh, amazing people. Number two, what is the name of the 2,000 year old road built by the Romans again that has a mountain named after it? This road is on the mountain. It actually goes over the summit of the mountain and along over to Broughton. So what is the name of the 2,000 year old road built by the Romans that has a mountain named after it and the road goes up over the summit of this mountain? How many towns are there in the Lake District? How many towns are there in the Lake District? Is it A, 122? B, 197? Or C, 234? So A, 122? B, 197? Or C, 234? Ah, I understand. I've got a 20 second delay. When he said only in winter, they, they do go up in the summer too, but um, uh, it's only during the winters of Hilltop Assessor. Wow, amazing. Nice one. So, uh, number four, opened in 1796. It's the shortest, it's only a mile long. It's the widest, and its widest part is 65 feet across, and it's the deepest 15 foot canal. But which Cumbrian town? Uh, is this um, uh, canal in? Which can be a town? Uh, it is winter season. I hold my hand up. I was just looking for. Uh, oh. But you still know the mountain. You still, you're right, they go up in the winter, but you know the mountain. Anyway, but number four, I don't mind that. Number four, number four, opened in 1769. It's the shortest, widest, and deepest canal in the UK. But which Cumbrian town is it actually in? Number five, name an island in Cumbria where it's still possible that you can be crowned king. So number five, name an island in Cumbria where it's possible to be crowned king. Uh, yeah, and in fact, again back to the felt obsessors, they do it only in the winter, and you can also do some winter climbing courses with them. They are very, very good, very knowledgeable people. <laughs> but back to the quiz, number nine, number five, God, name the island in Cumbria where it's still possible to be crowned king. Number six, uh, I only, I only found out about the gem list uh, when I was sitting on the Swiss. Name one of, there's two towns that have been designated as gem towns. There are only 51 in the UK, there's a UK list. Can you name one of them? Name one of the only two Lake District towns designated as a gem town in the list of 51 on a UK list. Gem towns. I'd never heard of it before, but both towns have put it in there. Uh, welcome to we're in the top top of the 51 gym towns in the UK. So I only want one of them. No extra points. If you put two in, you still get a point. But you do get bragging rights, I guess. So we're one of those. Also now, can you name me two lakes that private powered craft are allowed on? There's more than two. There's quite a there's, there's, there's surprising a surprising number, but can you name me two lakes that private powered craft are only allowed on?
Number eight, which is steeper by percentage incline, rhinos or hard knot? Which is the steeper pass by percentage? They feel pretty similar when you're driving up them, even steeper when you're walking up them, almost impossible when you're cycling up them. But which one is steeper, the rhinos or the hard knot? Now we all know Windermere is the longest, and we all know Wastwater is the deepest. But which is the second largest lake in the Lake District? On this top of the pile of Milarkey. Which is the second largest lake in the Lake District? Number nine. Another slip of wine. Hmm. Number ten. What's the number of the bus that runs right through the heart of the Lake District from Lancaster to Keswick? What's the number of that bus? It's uh, it's fantastic service, gets you all the way through the lakes, uh, probably 365, days, uh, 365 days a year, why not put the neck out? Um, it's also used as a booze cruise in the summer. There's lots of people buying the season ticket. And they go up and down this bus route, uh, dropping in and out and going into some of the fantastic restaurants and pubs all along the way in the different towns. But what's the number of that bus? Now, I've got a bonus question for you. And I'm going to apologise right now because I'm not Cumbrian, I am Cornish. I could try and say it in Cornish, but I don't think it would make it so. But Ars Garniam, Ars Garniam. Is a, a cum what does that mean in Cumbrian? Ars yarn gam. What on earth does that mean in Cumbrian? For a bonus question, that's your eleven. That's your eleven pointer. So well, well done. That's it. Three sections. You got thirty three points. Thank you so so much for taking part. I'm going to go through the answers now. I'd just like to thank everybody uh, who has taken part. I'd also like to thank the people who have been donating as well. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for, uh, for that. I'm, I'm really surprised because I just thought we'd do it for a bit of a laugh, but uh, people have been donating as well. Thank you. Um, let's run through the, the answers of these first, first three sections. So Beatrix Potter was born in London. I'll take London. If you know South Kensington, you can brag to your friends even more. But she was born South Kensington, London. That's number one. Section three. Who lived in Duff Cottage? Wordsworth, of course. He lived there, 1799 to 1808. Um, daffodils and all that. St. Patrick was the famous saint born in Ravenglass. There is a little bit of, well, we're already talking about the first, the, uh, the weather guys, but um, some, some people don't believe he was born there, but uh, Ravenglass do, or just to the right of Ravenglass. St. Patrick, it's a famous Irish saint. Arthur Stanley Jefferson was Stan Laurel uh, from Olverston, Olverston lad. He's uh, got a great statue there. We, saw, I saw, we watched the film about Stan Laurel the other day. Uh, really nice, really nice guy. Number five, town is Kendall, Catherine Parr, Henry VIII's last wife. She survived him, so she became the queen. And she was born in Kendall. In the castle. Number six, Canon Rawlsley was one of the founding fathers of the National Trust. So the organisation for places of historic interest and natural beauty is the National Trust. St Bega is the local saint of St Bees. She was a Irish princess he was going to be married off to a Viking warlord, uh, but she hid at St. Bees and became the saint. George Romney is the famous portrait artist born in Dalton and Furness. Uh, lots of his paintings are in Kendall at the moment. That's the answer to number eight, Mr. George Romney. Romney, even. Number nine, it's crazy. It's the most popular walk in the UK. It's the coast to coast path. It's still unofficial, uh, and Alfred, it was devised by Alfred Wainwright. In fact, so many people do it these days that they need 
changing some of the some of the um, actual route to try and save it a little bit because it's getting worn out. But Alfred Rainwright was the original Coast to Coast. That's number nine. Number ten, Teton Mutineer, The Bounty, Fletcher Christian, as played by L. Flynn and um, Mel Gibson, to, to name a couple of them. So that's your, that's your section three answers. Should we move into section four? Yeah. Give you a few, few moments to argue about whether, whether my answers are right or wrong. And we'll move into, uh, into section four. Cool. So this Roman fort is on the Hard Knot Pass. Halfway up, it's just amazing. Up on the Hard Knot Pass, this Roman fort, the main road that connected uh, that part of England at the time. Of course, this is the Langdale Valley, beautiful valley. Glacier, taking it out. That's the Langdale Valley, number two. Number three, of course, is Keswick. And that hall, that town clock, is called Moot Hall. In fact, that's where the Bob Graham round starts at that door. You have to start there and within 24 hours you've got to get round and get back. Um, I'm not sure what the actual record is at the moment. I'm not going to say it because I don't know. It. So, uh, but Moot Hall and the town is Keswick, number three. This is, of course, is Rydal Water uh, and it's Nab Cottage, where Coleridge and Wordsworth used to hang out writing their poems and it's it's a funny shot just to the right of those two swans is where the two big islands are we call this pike rock here when i'm swimming in the in the lake um because the baby pike hang around it i don't think that's the official one the cotton the name of the lake is brother's water brother's water i always think it looks like buttermere because when you swim from the, the top end to the bottom, you see that big triangular shape. But this is Brothers Water. The Kirkson Pass is just up on the left of, of that picture. Oops. So that's number five, is Brothers Water. Where's this great bandstand? The Glebe in Bowness. You can get the point if you say Glebe, it's Bowness. If you're local, you always call it the Glebe. That's the name of the park and that flat area around that part of, uh, of Bowness. Nice one, Richard. Thumbs up. Thank you. Thumbs up to you too. Nice one. So uh, number six is the Glebe or Bowness. Bowness on Windermere. Number seven. Someone shouting at you from now. Uh, both mountains with similar names: Scarfell and Scarfell Pike, and that's the Scarfell Massif that they're based on. Two mountains. Of course. Uh, Number eight, it's the gondola. That's the famous steamboat on Coniston. It's called the gondola. Number nine, this is Stott Park Bobbin Mill. They made bobbins here for the uh, for the uh, cotton industry. So all of the, I was going to say lathes, but they're not lathes, all of the uh, winding machines, all the bombings were made up here. At Stop Park Bomb Mill. Really, really beautiful place. And it's still a working mill. Still a, still a great place. Uh, the name of the tarn is Stickle Tarn. That's Pavey Arc up at the back. And this tarn in the front here is called Stickle Tarn. That's number 10. I forgot to put the numbers on here, but hey. To be mind. I'm not sure who the guy is in the t shirt looking down. You have a dog, maybe going for a swim, but uh, the name of this town, Pave Yard at the back, the answer is Stickle Town. So the last uh, last section, nearly there. <coughs> Hope you guys have all got some good points there. You're not arguing too much. Um, we'll go straight into the answers for, uh, for round five, possible 11 points for that bonus question. Hope you're all doing really well. So here we go. Felt-top assessors, they don't go up every single day, only in the winter, I do apologise. Uh, but the answer is Helvellyn. They all go up Helvellyn in the winter to get to tell you what the conditions are like. Um, I don't 
and wipe out every single day. But hey, they're doing an amazing thing climbing up there in that winter. It's horrendous. High Street is the name of the 200 year old road that goes up over the mountain summit and it goes over the mountain called High Street, funnily enough. That's number two. How many towns are there in the Lake District? There's 197, of course. Answer is B. 197. Can you hear the table creaking? Uh, Olverston has the shortest, widest and deepest canal in the UK in Olverston. There was, uh, as you drive into Olverston, the hoads on the right hand side. That was a slate quarry and they built a very small, wide, deep canal to service it in 1796. Now, if you go to Peel Island, just off Barrow, if you're the uh, landowner, the landowner, the landlord of the local pub, you have the ability, uh, due to Royal Charter, to be crowned King of Peel Island. Number five, Peel Island. So, two towns that are designated gem towns in the list of 51 in the UK is Cockermouth, which is fourth, and Whitehaven, which is fifth. I did not know that until two days ago. But Cockermouth and Whitehaven, are the two only Lake District towns in the, in the list of gem towns in the UK. So either one of those gets you a point. Two of them, you're, uh, you're as clever as I am, or as sad as I am, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> Number seven. Uh, so any, any, of these, any two of these lakes, Windermere, Coniston Water, Olverston or Derwent, allow powered craft can't go on any of the other lakes with an engine apart from those four. So any of those two will get you a point. If you've got one, doesn't count. Don't give you a point. You have to have two to get a point. So Windermere, Constant Water, Olverston or Dole Water. Which is uh, the steeper pass? It's the hard knot, 33%. Just a bit steeper than the rhinos, though it doesn't feel like it, I think, when you're going over it on the bike. But the hard knot pass is the answer to number eight. The second largest lake in the Lake District is Oldswater. Three, three dog legs, beautiful, uh, very cold lake to swim. I swim there quite a bit. Um, but it's the second largest lake in terms of distance in the Lake District. Uh, Squeeze yourself a point. Well done. And of course, it's the 555. <laughs> well, it's not just the Lake District. We are living in Cumbria. So I'm going, yes, Johnny, you are right. Neither of those towns technically are actually in the Lake District. I do like the, I do like the barracking. Um, so yeah, yeah, possibly you are right. Yeah. But, but we're inclusive here. Cumbrians, Lake District, Lake Districtians, uh, we're all here. So, uh, so that's the answer. Anyway, it's my quiz. So, <laughs> so that's the answer. But, but to number ten, uh, the answer is what number uh, bus is the five five five? It's a booze cruise. You can jump on in Lancaster, wake up in Keswick. And your bonus question: Ars Yang, Ars Gan Yam is I'm going home. I'm going home. If someone shout that at you, he or she's had enough, and they're heading home. That gets you a point. Ours going, yam. So what I thought I'd do as well, um, if there's any of you who are doing it against any of your mates, or any of you when you get your numbers, um, this is what's called a tiebreaker question. So. Uh, if you've got any, uh, if you have any friends of yours that are equal numbers now, what I'd like you to do is write down how long you think Old's Water is in feet. Nearest one wins. So, how long is Old's Water in feet? That's your tiebreaker. 
Give you a few more seconds to have a think about it. Okay, the answer is 38,714. None of you got that. I didn't get that. I had to actually Google it, then change it from kilometres to, uh, to feet. But that's how long Old's water is in feet. I swim it twice, and it fills every single foot of that on that side. So that's it. Well done. How have we done? How have we done out of 55 points? Let's see your numbers up on the uh, up on the um, up on the chat. If you're on the chat, uh, you could if you have scored points and you're not on the chat, please stick them up on our Facebook page. Um, hey, well done, Belinda. Thirty-eight points. That's really good. Nice one. Thank you so so much for taking part. Uh, it's been ace making it for you guys. Having a right good laugh, sort of digging things, and I've had a right good laugh getting there. My butt kicked by uh, all you guys saying that I would like to say that the uh, filter processes only go up in the winter and that perhaps uh, Cockermouth and um, the other place I've forgotten now isn't technically in the Lake District but it is in Cumbria. But it was my quiz so uh, it's my questions and I'm doing it for free anyway so. So well done. So so we have some amazing... James, I don't... Nice James, that's really close, 38,157 on the, on the things. Um, some people aren't. 42 from Louise. That's amazing. Well done, uh, well done, Louise. 42 in Essex. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed the. I'm glad you enjoyed the quiz. We just done it for a laugh. I know this lockdown's been a nightmare, and quite a few people haven't been able to get up here to the Lake District. It is still here. Um, it's doing pretty well, um, and uh, it's missing you all. And hopefully soon, um, we can uh, we can all meet again and do a bit of swimming. Do a bit of cycling, do a bit of paragliding, do a bit of sitting at a lovely pub drinking a beer. But uh, but thank you, thank you so much. And uh, I don't think I'm just going to have a quick check, but I don't. Th oh my god! Um, let's put me on there. Uh, thank you very very much. Uh, yeah, I've got to admit, right? Uh, Ollie should have a really good score because he knows half the answers because he lives here with me. Um, Thank you so, so much. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say goodbye now. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the quiz. If you have, um, yeah, Nick's the winner. Yes, yes. 44. That's amazing, Nick. Well done. I didn't actually see that in the, in the, uh, the things. Thank you very, very much. I'm going to end the screen now. Um,